Botswana's President Makwesi Masisi has been tested positive for COVID-19 and placed in mandatory self-isolation, a government spokesperson said on Monday. The Vice President will assume the President's duties until further notice while Masisi is in isolation. New coronavirus infections have risen sharply in the diamond-rich southern African country since the detection of Omicron variant late last year. But health officials say hospitalizations have not spiked. Botswana has managed to fully vaccinate 71% of its eligible population of around 1.3 million people. Health officials say on December 29 that Botswana would start to administer booster doses while the age limit of vaccination was reduced to 12 years from 18 years. A new round in the fierce battle. On Monday afternoon, the Cape Townian Fire Brigade was once again deployed to contain the fire threatening to consume South Africa's parliament. Under the eyes of the population, a dozen firefighters were using a crane lift to direct their hose towards the roof of the 19th century building. I think that was before five um, when the crews alerted us to a fire in the roof void. At that time, there were only about six, uh, six fire engines and about 30 personnel on scene. The officer in charge immediately called upon more resources. As you saw, there's a lot of fire engines that were passed in. So we currently have about 10 um, fire appliances on scene, with about 60 personnel uh, actively fire, fighting the fire in the in the roof. As you can see, it's a bit, little bit damper and a bit challenging for the for the guys due to the slope of the roof as well as the wind fanning the fire continuously. The blaze first began on Sunday in the wood-panelled older part of the building, which houses South Africa's first parliament and some of the nation's most cherished artefacts. A suspect was arrested by Cape Town authorities on suspicion of arson, theft and housebreaking. The man is expected to be taken to court on Tuesday. On Monday evening, the firefighters were still on scene. The agreement between Sudanese former Prime Minister Abdallah Amdok and the military has eventually lasted just over a month. One day after the politician stepped down from his role, Sudanese woke up on Monday with mixed reactions to the news. The resignation of Amdok means a lot to us. Amdok is a man that the whole country agreed on. After his resignation, we feel that Sudan lost an important personality that was approved by the international community and the Sudanese people. We hope that he will make a comeback in the coming period as an independent and become the Sudanese president. Amdok sent a message to all the Sudanese politicians and it is to step down if someone cannot take on the task. This is the best lesson. It has never happened in Sudan history for a person to come out and frankly admit his defeat to the people. Abdullah Amdok had been reinstated by the army chief Abdel Fattah al-Burhan after the October 25 coup that put an end to the civilian rule and drove into the streets millions of Sudanese. We have been expecting Amdok's resignation for a year now. Firstly, because if someone lost something, then they cannot give it back. Secondly, because Sudanese women have given birth to thousands of men like Amdok. So I think the people are not tied to one person only. Sudan is full of patriotic men. The country was navigating a fragile transition towards full civilian rule since April 2019 and the ouster of President al-Bashir. The resignation of the Prime Minister leaves the military in full command. Egypt's Suez Canal announced on Sunday its annual revenues reached $6.3 billion last year, the highest in its history. The head of the Suez Canal Authority, Admiral Osama Rabai, said that last year revenues were 12.8 percent higher compared to 2020. In a statement, the Admiral added that traffic on the waterway increased by 10 percent, reaching over 20,000 vessels. About 10 percent of global trade, including 7 percent of the world's oil, flows through the Suez Canal, which connects the Mediterranean and Red Seas. In March, the canal was blocked six days when a massive container ship, the Ever Given, ran aground, causing chaos in supply chains. Economic difficulties and the COVID-19 pandemic pushed many young Cubans to take refuge in religion, including this cult that was born as a brotherhood of protection between Carabali slaves who worked as duck workers in the port of Havana almost 200 years ago. 
With a rooster in end, the little devil is in charge of cleaning the initiates. The masquerade with dances stimulated by songs and rhythms of sacred drums represents the presence of the ancestors. The Abakwa cult is one of the main religions of African origin that maintains strength on the island, but unlike others, it is exclusive to Cuba. On their knees, blindfolded, five young people listen to blessings in Yoruba, a language brought by African slaves more than four centuries ago, while swearing to be brave, good parents, children and friends, respectful and upright. They are the new Abakwas, a unique Cuban cult.